Twister embraces its its dumb moments proudly. You know, it embraces its its dumb scenarios, dialogue, and in nineties cheese with with absolute glee. It, it wears it on its sleeves proudly, even from like the very first moment of that dad getting sucked out of the cellar by that tornado. <laughs> Let's go ahead and move on to my review for Twisters. So, uh, you know, we've gotten quite a few legacy uh, film and, and television sequels over the last few years, right? You know, I, I would argue some of the best have been movies like the, the shockingly great Top Gun Maverick. Uh, one of the best movies of the 2020 so far. Certainly one of the best blockbusters of the 2020 so far. And uh, other films like, you know, the, the first Creed film uh, directed by Ryan Coogler. I, I thought that movie was great. I mean, of course, we already had like a, a really good legacy sequel in Rocky ba uh, Balboa from like, what, 2006, 2007 initially came out. But then reigniting interest in, in, in the Rocky franchise again with, uh, with, with Creed. I thought that was, was wonderful. Um, and we've also gotten some great legacy TV shows as, as well, most recently with X-Men 97, a show that was a fantastic sequel series uh, to the original 90s X-Men the Animated Series, a show that I grew up with. Now, at the same time, you know, we, we've gotten a lot of crap legacy sequels over the last decade. You know, from Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire, Afterlife, the answer to the call, whatever that other one was, you know, uh, to The Matrix Resurrections. You know, the, these films could easily be labeled as franchise killers, you know, completely bereft of anything truly new or, or, or interesting. Um, and, but now we, we have a, another legacy sequel. With, with Twisters. And I'll admit, I, I, I really wasn't looking forward to this movie at all. You know, I, I haven't really cared for the trailers and the marketing for the film. Uh, you know, th though apparently it, it, it did excite a lot of other people. A lot of people were really into the trailers. And I guess to be fair, it has been a hot minute since we got a really big budget a uh, theatrically released disaster movie. You know, I, we, we've got maybe some more mid-tier ones or a lot of crap that kind of goes uh, straight to video, you know, straight to streaming, right? Um, the, the thing that was, I guess, just missing for me from all the trailers was just the mind-numbing stupidity <laughs> of the original film. And, and I, I say that with complete affection. I enjoy the original 1996 Twister. Yeah, not because I, I, I think it's a, a, a very good movie, but because of how obviously dumb it is <laughs> from, from the disaster scenarios to the characters. You know, T Twister embraces its, its dumb moments proudly. You know, it embraces its, its dumb scenarios, dialogue, and, and 90s cheese with, with absolute glee. It, it wears it on its sleeves proudly, even from like the very first moment of that dad getting sucked out of the cellar by that tornado. <laughs> I, I knew it. I was in for just some dumb, wild ride shenanigans. And, and, and for the most part, you know, the, the 96 film uh, succeeded in embracing uh, the dumb, if you will. And based on the trailers for Twisters, it just, it just looked more generic uh, and safe. And it, and it wasn't really speaking to me or exciting me, uh, like, at all. B but, but... I've seen the film, and I can now speak on its quality or lack thereof. First of all, uh, despite being a sequel, sequel, quote-unquote, th this movie has no real connection to the original film, especially in terms of, of the characters or the story. You have the, the Dorothy device, or at the very least, a, a, a version of it, a successor of it, uh, but that's about it when it comes to the connections to the original movie. You know, honestly, the, the only reason why I feel like they're calling it a sequel to Twister is to just kind of play on people's nostalgia and, and love for the original 1996 film, uh, which, which, I don't know, is kind of weird to me. 
So if you were hoping for Helen Hunt or uh, a, a, a member of, of, of the team to be featured or just like a nice touching moment honoring Bill Paxton or Philip Seymour Hoffman, uh, you'll be disappointed because it's, it's just not here at all. Getting that out of the way, um, we, we do follow uh, this college student and kind of like wannabe storm chaser played by uh, Daisy Edgar Jones. She, she's involved in a, in a tragic event that pretty much obliterates most of her team in the beginning of the movie. And, and she carries that tragedy with her for like several years. You know, she's asked by Anthony Ramos' character to, to chase more tornadoes just because it's cool, obviously, right? And, they're eventually, and they eventually meet Glenn Powell's character, who's this kind of cowboy, storm chaser, internet celebrity personality. Chaos and tornado hunting ensues. Um, you also have actors like David Cornsweet, you know, which is so funny. David Cornsweet, he's just constantly showing up in all these different f- films where it kind of takes place in a rural location. It's like this man is just, he was always destined to be Clark Kent, kal Superman. So it's pretty funny. But, um, but yeah, so it's great seeing him here. But you, know, you, have, you have actors like David Cornsweet and, and, and Brandon uh, Pereira, uh, who previously was in, in No Plate Angel, who I thought was the standout in that movie. And uh, Katie O'Brien. Uh, who you guys have seen in stuff like The Mandalorian, most recently in Love Lies Bleeding, which I thought that was her best role yet. You know, and I think they do like a pretty good job of what they're what they're given in the film itself. Uh, they're 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 consistently doing a, a great job or or elevating just like whatever films or shows they just happen to appear in for the last several years. And I just want to see you know them in more supporting and and leading roles in the future, which. We obviously will going forward since they seem to be having such great success. Uh, however, uh, Jones, Ramos, and, and Powell uh, are the standouts in this movie. You know, they get a surprising amount of depth that I honestly thought would not be featured in a Twister sequel. You know, but that's exactly what we what we get here. There, there is a, just um, a nice sense of chemistry with the three of them. Uh, for me, Glenn Powell is, is the one I gravitated towards the most throughout the movie. Just so much of his performance reminded me of the charisma uh, of, of Matthew McConaughey. He's kind of doing that. You know, I, I, can, I can see his character in just real life convincing people, convincing me to pursue storm chasing, tornado wrangling, because it's just so much fun. Uh, as, as his slogan says, if you feel it, you chase it, <laughs> and and he makes you feel that way in this in this movie. So the lead characters, along with some of the supporting cast, are I would argue and this might be controversial to say, but I would argue they are better written uh, than the characters in the original film. Um, but th- th- there there is so much of this movie that feels like the first film. You know, in terms of its its story structure, the plot, and just kind of certain action sequences even feel the same. You know, sure, we, we have updated special effects and CGI that looks better than the original, but there were just a lot of moments that I'm like, okay, I've seen this before in the original Twister. You, you, you do get some epic scenes with these Twisters, twins, as they say, uh... But there are moments where they're trying to almost, and this was very bizarre to me, there are just these moments where it feels like they're trying to hide the twisters. Like there's a lot of cutting away from them for some odd reason. Uh, Cutting away from them for like no reason at all. Uh, Lee Isaac Chun, hope I'm saying his name correctly, he directed this movie, who who previously did uh, the the indie film Minari, which got a lot of award attention. Uh, and he, he directed an episode of The Mandalorian. He's done some other stuff as well. Um, but him directing this was, was very odd to me, just based on his previous credentials. And, and I honestly think there are times where he did not do a good job capturing the scale of these twisters, of these tornadoes, these storms, these tornadoes. Uh, the spectacle of it all, to me was underwhelming at, at, at times. You know, it kind of reminded me of, um, of a filmmaker I really have, like, 
no affection towards at all. Uh, Gareth Edwards. Um, he reminded me of of his film Godzilla, Godzilla 2014. For, for for whatever reason, he felt the need to constantly hide Godzilla in that film, even though he's like a 300 foot tall lizard, radioactive lizard kaiju. It's like, why are you hiding him? <laughs> What's the point of this? You know, he's he's out there. And then you know, as the sequels went on, they're like, oh, we're gonna show Godzilla constantly. He's like, oh, thank fucking Christ that you did that. And so. We spend, like, a lot of time inside these tornadoes. A lot of times, like, oh, those, those – we don't get, like, any big, huge, like, wide shots or they're few and far between. And it's just really odd. And I, I just don't understand it whatsoever. The cinematography is an incredibly mixed bag throughout this, throughout this film. Um, it's frustrating. So, in a way, I'm, I'm both impressed and disappointed by this movie. It delivered on something that I thought – would be just ignored throughout the, the characters and their and 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 their depth like they have depth um and the, and the crazy thing is it it underwhelmed it underwhelmed me uh, uh in, in such a way that was just so frustrating i was underwhelmed in the thing that i thought it would probably succeed at which was the twisters themselves which was the spectacle of a disaster film I would argue that's the weakest element of of this movie. So I don't know. We 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 have a we have a legacy sequel that really doesn't really feel like a legacy sequel at all, aside from just the fact that it happens to have the device from the original movie. Um, and I guess that it has tornadoes, it has twisters in there. But um, I don't know. I just I just kind of feel like this movie was. It's just, it's relying on a lot of people's nostalgia for that first film, but at the same time, it really has nothing to do with that movie whatsoever. And that's kind of disappointing to a degree. But at the same time, it did succeed in, in a way that the original film did not in providing us characters that we do like and we do care about. And I liked, I liked their interactions. I, I liked the dialogue that was given to them. They have a lot of, they all feel very different from each other. They just don't feel like, ah, uh, you know, window dressing. Right, they they don't all feel like meat for the grinder, you know, or meat for the the tornado in in this case, and so that I enjoyed. Like, I liked it. I I I thought the movie was was more exciting and more fun when they were engaging in conversation than when they were getting sucked up by some of these tornadoes and dealing with some of the you know, uh, um, crazy action scenes or somewhat mediocre action scenes uh, later on. And uh, yeah, so that's that's kind of that's it's frustrating for me. You know, um, so I think it's a mixed bag of, of a movie. It, it, it's it's it does not achieve uh, the greatness that uh, some recent legacy sequels have, like Top Gun Maverick, like Creed. Nor, but but at the same time, I I do not think uh, it is as bad as something like a Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire. Or whatever the 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 answer the call or afterlife and you know crap like that, um, and like the Matrix Resurrections, it, it's just kind of firmly in the middle for me. You know, it's it's passable entertainment. I honestly think that I don't know. This was just given to a a, a filmmaker who has a better grasp and sense of spectacle. Um, it would be more entertaining. And, and, but still keeping the original writer, I want to give a, the, this writer a shout out. Uh, uh, Mark L. Smith, I feel like they did a pretty goddamn good job. And um, they have an interesting uh, filmography in terms of what they've, uh, what they've written. A lot of smaller films, but then they've done some genre stuff like Overlord, and then they've done some like huge, huge uh, like, uh, uh, Oscar-winning movies like The Revenant, you know? And I don't know. I guess it, 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 the the writing in this film is 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 better than the direction of 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 the movie, and I at least appreciate the effort into making these characters better than than the original film. But yeah, it's um despite all the tech the the the, the, the uh, uh improved technology and CGI, it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't capture the same level of spectacle and fun as the first film, and uh, I didn't I, I expected the opposite. So, yeah, a little, little disappointing. Um, but, yeah, I'm actually very curious. How do you guys feel about this? This movie, for the most part, seems to be getting, like, a, a lot of good reactions from people. I haven't sat down and, like, uh, read a, a, any other reviews or 
or watching uh, other people's reviews, just kind of seeing like some reactions and things. So I'm very curious to hear what you guys think of Twisters, this sequel. <laughs> Five minutes later. Oh, Hurricane, Hurricane Heist where fans represent. I got to watch that movie. We got to watch that movie with you guys. Let's see. Geos oh, Geostorm was rough. Geostorm was not good. Did a spoiler review, that, a review for that back in the day. When something goes away for long enough, when it comes back, it feels like the greatest breath of fresh air ever. Yeah. So, I mean, not all the time, though. Not all the time. Uh, let's see. Are the music to my ears? I've been getting sick of every single trying on a lyric of some every time just to kick off the story of a less interesting cast of characters. Uh, Korn's literally in his last name, so it makes Yeah, he just has to be that, yeah. Pal's having a good S here. Hmm... Yeah, it seems like, yeah, I know, exactly, yeah, <laughs> that's what you need, uh, um, Glenn Powell for your legacy sequel. Let's see here, the actress that played the grandmother, uh, won, oh, for that year, I don't remember that year, that Oscars, I don't think I even watched it, I didn't even watch it, I can't recall. Uh, big one was lucky thinking about Godzilla 2014, the very abrupt way a certain character was killed midway through the movie, oh, I know. Uh, with Brian Cranston, that was such a huge, a huge mistake. It's like he, they literally used him as the face of the marketing because he was like coming off of, it was like a year after the end of Breaking Bad, right? Because didn't Breaking Bad end in 2013? Godzilla was 2014, if I recall. And like every bit of the marketing was, it was focused on him. And then like Aaron Taylor Johnson was barely in any of it. And he turns out he was the main character. People went, what? Such a, God, such a frustrating movie. Thankfully, the, the movies got better as they went along. Um, but yeah, that first film, oof. I enjoyed this quite a bit. So space I like the fact they didn't fall into the traps you typically get from Lego sequels, and I liked following the characters. Let's see here. Didn't he write Commando? Who? This guy? Uh, Mark L. Smith? Uh, I don't think so. The, according to his filmography, the, the first film that he direct, or excuse me, wrote and also directed uh, was was Seance. So no, no, I don't I don't see that listed here. No, he's done things like Seance, something called Vacancy. I think it's a horror film. Vacancy 2, the first cut. He's done some horror films. Uh, he did The Revenant, Overlord. And, uh, yeah, Twisters is his most recent movie. Let's see here. Hurricane Ice, he's a watch. That sounds fun. It's set to open bigger than expected. They were predicting 40, 55 million. Now they're saying 72 million after today. Yeah, we're going to see how it does. It has, it has a pretty huge budget. It's $200 million. Well, it's weird. It's estimated between 150, 200 million. So we'll see. Uh... Interesting review. Sounds like a fun movie. Is Anthony Ramos good? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Anthony Ramos, the, the the three main leads in the film and some of the supporting characters are are very good. Um, uh, Anthony Ramos, yeah. Uh, um, oh god, what's her name? Daisy Edgar Jones and Dave. Uh, well, Dave Courtswain is good. Uh, but and Glenn Powell. Uh, they're 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 great across the board. But then you have people like Katie O'Brien. You have David Cornsweet. You have uh, Brandon Pereira. Um, Brandon Pereira, who was previously in. In Jordan Peele's Nope. He was honestly my favorite character in that movie. Like, I didn't like a lot of the characters in that film, like, at all. Um, but he felt like a classic Spielbergian protagonist. Um, whereas the other ones just didn't at all. I just thought were annoying. Let's see. I wanted a red Dodge truck in a high school. <laughs> oh, let's see here. That was a pandemic year. A lot of good stuff lost in memory. Hill. Oh, gotcha. I know. They chose a bad week to come out before Deadpool Wolverine come out. Yeah, that was, I don't know why they, they chose that. It's That is... Yeah, I don't know. We'll see how it how it holds. Dad, this movie sounds fucking absurd, and I'm kind of on board after wondering who the hell wanted this in, in the first place. Well, you know... It's the thing, like, there's been, well, you know, Twister helped inspire so many disaster films, like, throughout the late 1990s and then well into the 2000s and stuff. Like, it kind of reignited interest in the disaster subgenre, if you, if you will, um, because it kind of had, it, it waned. It kind of went away for, for a while, because there were, like, a ton in the, in the 60s and 70s, and, to an exter and then they started, like, parroting them in the 80s and things, right, like with Airplane. Um, and they just kind of like went away, but then I think Twister, along with maybe like a couple others, like just help reignite interest in people. Like, oh shit! And plus that spectacle and the advancement of like CGI effects, so you started to get like a lot of that, of course. Um, but yeah, in terms of like a legacy sequel, it just it didn't feel like it necessitated a uh, a sequel. And uh, and that's the other thing too. Like, I don't even the only reason why this is this is a sequel is is name recognition. That's really it. Like, there's nothing in this movie 
aside from the Dorothy device that connects it to the original film. Like, nothing. Um, so, it's, I don't know. It just, it didn't even be called this. It didn't even need to be called Twisters. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Uh, Edgar Jones is in a really cool movie we should do a watch party for called Fresh. Maybe whenever we get another cannibal movie coming. Ooh, cannibals. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, chat. So, very mixed on this film. Um, I think the writing is fairly surprising and strong, but the direction, I wasn't impressed by. Uh, but very curious to see how this movie does, and also curious to hear your guys' thoughts on it once you've all seen it. But for me, for myself, I thought it was okay. It's okay. It's all right. 